I'm gonna hit record again. And I guess Adam, I'm so sorry about that. Do you mind if we start over again? No. All right. Son of a bitch. How embarrassing is that? Always find what you love at Total Wine and More. With so many great bottles to choose from at the lowest price, it's easy to find your favorite Cabernet or a new single barrel bourbon to try with some help from one of their friendly guides. And with every bottle comes the confidence of knowing you just found something amazing. With the lowest prices for over 30 years, find what you love and love what you find only at Total Wine and More. Curbside pickup and delivery available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia and North Carolina. Drink responsibly and be 21. From their bar to yours, Chad and Sarah of the popular YouTube channel It's Bourbon Night bring you their favorite at-home old-fashioned mix with the new Elemental Elixir's Golden Hour Syrup. It's a custom-made syrup with notes of bold black tea, warm spices, and orange zest. All you need is your favorite whiskey and ice. No bitters needed. One bottle makes 16 drinks, so that's only $1 a cocktail before you add your own whiskey. They can also be enjoyed in other cocktails or spirits, mocktails, coffee, tea, and anything you can think of. It's crafted locally in Lexington, Kentucky, and you can get your bottle now at whiskeyambitions.com. Ed Bly and Rising Tide Spirits are back again with a new release of Old Stubborn Bourbon. And this release of Old Stubborn is a premium hand marriage of 10, 11, and 12-year cask drink, barely filtered pot still bourbon. It comes in at a staggering 123.8 proof, and the flavoring grain for this one, which the last one was weeded, but this time it's now rye. Rich, sweet, and bold with a long finish that's sure to be another eye-opener. You can order online at Sealbox or TheBourbonConcierge.com, and you can even purchase in person at Revival Vintage Spirits, and even now with very few select stores in Kentucky. You can get it now while you can, but be sure to do it because it's not going to last long. Do you ever pour yourself a bourbon, swirl it around, and then start struggling to come up with tasting notes? And perhaps you're also looking for a good Father's Day gift idea. Well, you can now solve both with a kit from Nose Your Bourbon. And unlike other nosing kits on the market, Nose Your Bourbon kits feature real ingredients for the most authentic aromas. You can smell real Tahitian vanilla bean instead of some synthetic aroma that's just made from chemicals. So head on over to NoseYourBourbon.com and enter code BP10 for 10% off your order. Play Whiskey Wednesday Round 11, The Memory Game. Until June 26, each week you can win one of our 12 incredible grand prizes. Select two doors at checkout, and if they match on drawing night, you'll win that bottle. Not a match? No worries. You still score a Weller 12-year. Every $5 ticket gives you five chances to win, including four weekly bonus prizes. Get your tickets now at give270.org. Charitable Gaming License ORG 0002703. Bringing to you the best stories from icons in the bourbon industry, it's Bourbon Pursuit. Now here are your hosts, Ryan and Kenny. Welcome back to another episode of the Bourbon Pursuit Podcast. I'm, my name is Kenny, and as always, I'm joined by my friend Ryan. How you doing today, buddy? How's I'm doing you? well, doing well. Uh, take two on this. Uh, you forgot to press record, so I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to, yeah, yeah. to re-talk is, about the, the Kentucky is, Bourbon Trail. This is the first time I messed up and that you didn't mess up, right? So it's uh, we get so, yeah, it's a one for one right now. So now I don't feel as bad, but anyways, I'm excited to talk to Adam with Kentucky Bourbon Trail. Uh, as we talked about, uh, we've been to Napa and been out there, hung out. It's great, but Kentucky Bourbon Trail is has its its own beauty and it's awesome. I love seeing the, all the distilleries and different sizes, the craft and small, big, uh, it's a great experience and I'm excited to talk to Adam about it. Yeah. You know, the one thing I'm really excited about the Kentucky bourbon trail is, is how it's really it has a booming effort on our economy here. And even in Louisville, we have all these distilleries that are buying up properties in downtown Louisville just because of the outside influence and people need, they kind of want to sometimes want to people get a, a downtown sort of feel, right? So they want to stay at, you know, proof on main or one of those swanky hotels downtown. And now these small distilleries or even, even larger ones are buying up all these little properties down there, renovating them and making it a, a better scene for everybody to come and look at. Yeah, it's pretty cool how how much tourism it's brought to our state, and we get to show it off. Like 
we're here, we're proud of it, but not everybody usually thinks Kentucky. They're like, uh, Kentucky basketball, we hate them, and uh, they're rednecks. So <laughs> it's cool to kind of get to show off, you know, the bourbon, the, the horse country, and just Bernheim Forest, like all the beauty that we have here in this state. Yeah, and I mean, the one great thing I really like about the Bourbon Trail as well is that there's a lot of diversity and, you know, you, it, it's not going to be something that you can do in a day. It's, it's something that you've got to really plan out. You've got to sit there and, and, you know, figure out like, where do we begin and uh, what places do we want to go see? Is there anything else along the way that we can see, whether it's uh, restaurants or anything like that? So I guess with that, let's go ahead and start leading into our guests. So today we have Adam Johnson. Adam is the director of the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. So Adam, I want to first say thank you once again for being on the show and uh, and coming to speak your mind about what's going on with the Bourbon Trail. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So I guess you know before we start getting talking about the Bourbon Trail, let's let's talk about you a little bit. So. Talk about, I guess, your history. How is there a time when you you first started really getting into bourbon? It's one of those questions that we always ask our de- our guests: is Can you remember that that first drink that that maybe got you hooked, or maybe that that got you your first hang- hangover, whatever it is? <laughs> right. Well, I I tell people all the time I, I best job in the Commonwealth, and I'm extremely lucky uh, to be in the position that I'm in. I, I'm just been a huge bourbon lover. Uh, I'm as geeky as the, as the next, um, and to actually have the job that I'm in is, is kind of a, a constant pinch me, pinch me moment. So, uh, I've been here about three years working for Kentucky Distillers Association and we're kind of, uh, just a small, uh, nonprofit, uh, that we're charged with promoting, protecting Kentucky signature bourbon industry. Um, it's a, a pretty old organization. We've been around since 1880. Uh, which makes us one of the oldest trade organizations in the in the country, and so to have kind of all this history and to work with such great companies and people really is something that uh, I still can't believe. Even after three years, I, you know, anytime I'm I'm riding around in Jimmy Russell's uh, minivan or something, I still still can't believe it that I'm actually getting to do all that. So, um, but in terms of first first drinks for me, it, uh, I kind of came to Kentucky. I'm not a native Kentuckian, but I kind of came uh, through school. I went to Center College down in Danville and just kind of got immersed in the Kentucky culture. I remember skipping my first class and, and going to Keeneland. And, uh, yeah, I probably had, a, I think, like a maker's mark there or something and just have been a, a Kentuckian ever since, I think. So um, I still remember having an easier time finding some of the stuff like uh, – the the vintage bourbon that the Willow guys put out that 17 year, you know, I think everyone knows, uh, with that, with the nice, uh, green foil. I remember picking up a bottle or two off, off the shelf and thinking, Oh man, this is, this is unbelievable. Uh, so I think those are some of the first experiences I had and just have been more, uh, involved in the bourbon industry ever since I kind of came through my role through tourism. So, uh, that's really my background. And just uh, count my lucky stars every day. So you get to live, sleep, and eat and drink bourbon all the time. Yeah, I think I was telling you guys before that was that was really my main charge. I think in my final job interview was uh, that's what they told me they want want me thinking about bourbon when I wake up and thinking about it and how to promote it when I go to bed and uh, everything in between. So that's a pretty good uh, mission statement, I think, to to, to work off of. Yeah, that's that's not too bad to get paid to do anything like that. I'm pretty sure that you make a a lot of people jealous for that. Yeah, I, I'm. I like I said, I can't believe. It. Very lucky. So Good to, yeah, oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, not a problem. So I mean, I guess uh, let's go ahead and talk about the the Bourbon Trail a little bit. So for anybody that that doesn't know, I mean, I guess we should say anybody from Kentucky knows about the Bourbon Trail. But there's probably a lot of people that are either maybe getting into bourbon or from out of state and they're traveling here and they want to maybe kind of talk about it or kind of listen or try to figure out what it is. I guess what's the, what's the elevator pitch of the Kentucky bourbon trail? Sure. So really it was created by the KDA and the member distillers to allow people to kind of get behind their, their favorite brands to, you know, to learn more about how it's made and kind of create more of that connection with, you know, so many of our great customers that enjoy uh, Kentucky's finest, you know, so uh, <clears throat> there aren't all, <laughs> 
we're kind of close to it here in Kentucky. I think, you know, you see those uh, giant brown signs on the highway all the time. And, but we really feel like uh, we're just kind of scratching the surface with visitors. So we want more and more people coming in and visiting us. Uh, we want more folks, you know, just immersing themselves in the culture of bourbon when they come here, because really you got to come here to learn the, the full story. We feel like, and you know, our numbers keep climbing and we hope to keep those numbers rising. We had about, uh, 700 and, and 25,000 visits to our member distilleries last year. And that includes our craft guys in that number. So, you know, think about that in maybe two years, we could be at a, a million people uh, or a million visits, I should say, to our member distilleries, which would be uh, just fantastic. So, it's at, at what point did this did the ramping up of all the tourism really begin? To because I mean, I, I feel like it's definitely been within the past few years that it's just right. grown exponentially. Right, and I feel like um, you know, 1999, the Kentucky Bourbon Trail was created and uh, by the KDA, and I think it was. It was really more of a deliberate attempt to be kind of like you mentioned before, Napa or the Scotch Whiskey Trail, because we realized we've got a lot of those same assets. And you know, a lot of our guys who are old timers tell stories about how, you know, tours were so haphazard. You know, if you just popped in at Four Roses and you saw Al Young, he might say, Well, oh man, I got ten minutes. Let me take you around real quick. And then I think those numbers kind of start crep start creeping up and People started being a little bit more deliberate about how they do tours and their visitor centers. And I would really say that, you know, it, like you said, in the last couple of years, it's really ramped up. But there was a time where we we try to take our foot off the pedal a little bit just because our visitor centers really weren't ready for the kind of crowds that we're seeing now. So if you really kind of just go down the list of, of the distilleries that make it up right now, almost everybody has put in significant dollars to – make sure they can handle the guests because they want people to have a good time, I think, and to feel um, like this, like they're equipped to handle folks with the, just the infrastructure. Um, you know, just go down the list. Maker's Mark expanded their tasting rooms. Jim Beam has the new American Stillhouse. What reserve just significantly um, yeah, revamped their visitor center. I don't know if you guys have seen that yet. Oh yeah, they're a new new tasting room. Um, Four Roses. They not only requipped or revamped their um, visitor center. They've opened up Cox's Creek, which is really close to um, Jim Beam. Uh, you know, Stitzel Weller, the guys at Bullet, are they've just opened that up for for tours. Um, Wild Turkey, brand new visitor center there. The house that Jimmy built one of the top architectural award-winning visitor centers in the country. I don't know if you guys just saw that article. So uh, Town Branch being pretty new as well with their visitor experience. So I think I've mentioned everybody. I mean, you kind of get a sense now that they're ready. You know, they're, they're able to handle more of these crowds we're getting and make sure people have a quality experience. Yeah, you, you mentioned pretty much uh, at least everybody that you can ever find on the website for it. So I guess if, if you are going to do the Bourbon Trail, is there is there a best way to do it? Like, you know, where do you start sure. and can you hit everything in a day? Like, how do you how do you kind of plan this stuff out? Right. Now, I did I did forget Evan Williams close to you guys. I apologize. So Evan Williams, <laughs> they're, in, uh, they're downtown experience. So, well, the, the best way to do it, honestly, is – and I think you guys kind of touched on this a little bit of – what. What do you want to see? What do you want to do? How much time do you have? How many people in your group? There's all these kind of questions you got to ask yourself as you're planning it. And, you know, what brands do you want to hit? Because it really is hard to do everything. And that's really something that we want people – that I think people are starting to understand a little bit more, that it is something that you need at least, in our opinion, you know, three, four days. Typically, I tell people to move around a little bit because I want you to see more of the state. So – uh, in my mind, it's a little bit of a horseshoe. So say you start in Louisville, uh, you can knock out Evan Williams and Bullet, you know, and then you work your way down towards Shepherdsville and Bardstown and Lebanon area, and you can do, you know, Maker's Mark and Heaven Hill. Uh, and then you kind of pop your way, you know, do Jim Beam in between. And then you start moving a little bit east, and, you know, you're passing through cities like Danville or, you know, Versailles, 
or uh, Lexington, and you can kind of knock out the Woodford Town Branch, Four Roses, you know, Wild Turkey part of your trip. And then you've kind of completed our passport program, and that's something you wanted to do. Or, you know, you've also got the opportunity to work in some of our smaller craft guys that are kind of um, nestled in between those stops. So that's typically what we tell people, at least I do. Also, Mandy in our office that handles a lot of the tour planning and trip planning is uh, move around a little bit. I want you to see in Bardstown. I want you to see in, you know, small town just as much as I want you to see in kind of the bigger cities like uh, Lexington or, or Louisville and see the the communities and how, you know, it's hard to get more bourbon than in Bardstown, you know, the bourbon capital of the world, or you're going to see, you know, small towns like Danville or Versailles or, or Lebanon or Shepherdsville, you know, so um, that's about uh, a standard answer for us. But typically it usually starts with us asking a million questions because this isn't a, a one size fits all type trip. It's really, you know, what brands do you want to see? Where do you want to eat? What else do you want to do? Do you care about history? Do you care about horses? What? There's just so much that we typically like to ask somebody. So we almost prefer to, to talk to you on the phone more than anything. So it's not really just about bourbon, right? I guess it's more about getting the, the full Kentucky experience. Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously, we think bourbon is the hook, and that's uh, what pays the bills for us. Don't get me wrong, but we definitely think there's so much more to your trip. And whether it's going to some of these great bourbon bars or staying in these bourbon themed hotels or um, seeing some of the, the history and horses and other museums we have to offer, it's really what's making us more of an attractive uh, location for people to, to make trips. I think we're really becoming much more of a, a popular destination for leisure travel because of these great uh, – options that we have that go beyond just our tours, but it's also the culinary. It's also the history. There's just so much that Kentucky has to offer. And we think if you use kind of the Kentucky bourbon trails, the backbone is your trip. Um, there's so many good ways to kind of fill in the gaps that are going to make it very memorable for folks. If you're anything like me, then you can't get enough about bourbon. And that's why I'm a subscriber to Bourbon Plus magazine. Bourbon Plus is a quarterly publication that tells the stories from the heart of bourbon, the farmers who grow the grain, the distillers who labor over the process, and the people like you and me who raise their glasses to celebrate it all. Subscribe to Bourbon Plus magazine today at bourbonplus.com, that's P-L-U-S dot com, and use code PURSUIT at checkout for $5 off your subscription. Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. Shopify's point of sale is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. And with Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. And get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's point of sale Go Mobile device for a battle tested solution. Plus, Shopify's award winning 24 7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash bourbon, all lowercase, and go to shopify.com slash bourbon to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash bourbon. So there's another thing that you mentioned, you know, you said craft in there. So you you go on the website and you kind of see there's the the Kentucky Bourbon Trail and then you have this kind of craft tour. So I guess kind of talk about what's the difference between the two. Can you intermingle them? Is it is it two separate things? I guess if anybody wants to go and see, like, what do you think the 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 right approach would be? Right, it's something we we love it when you kind of mingle your trip together with these. I mean. There's, there's so many that are, um, as you mentioned, uh, you know, limestone branch right next to Maker's Mark. And then you've got, um, you know, Willits within sight of Heaven Hill. Uh, you've got guys, um, that are coming online in Louisville, 
uh, like Copper and Kings. You got folks like Peerless. Uh, there's just so many of these uh, smaller operations <clears throat> or Barrel House, which is right next to the town branch. I mean, just go down the line. We want people kind of mixing in some of these um, smaller production tours and brands with some of our, you know, bigger, more heritage, more known brands. Cause it really is that, that spectrum that we love when people can go see something huge like a Jim Beam and then see someone like, uh, you know, Robert or, uh, at Barrel House or John Pogue at Old Pogue, you know, m- making just, you know, something so different in terms of size and scale that our visitors really just, they love that. They love seeing kind of the, the small and the big because it gives you a sense of, of the diversity we have in here in Kentucky. And it also kind of drives home that point that we always try to say is, you know, Kentucky is the one true authentic home of bourbon. And I think they see that uh, in our big and small operations alike. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I can tell you from myself, you know, I, I visited, I was actually going out to Loretto, I think, to, it was to help one of my friends. I think it was to move a TV or go get a TV. I don't, I can't remember it. Anyway, we were out there and he was like, you want to stop at Maker's Mark? And I was like, you know, I've never been there before. Might as well. So we go to Maker's Mark. We go in there. We, you know, we do the tour. We go dip our bottles and, and we're like, okay, well, that was cool. That was, that was a good little, uh, th- you know, 30 minute aside. And then we were driving back. We're like, oh, there's, there's Limestone Branch. Let's, let's go in there. And, we were literally one of three people that were actually there, uh, just me and my friend and then somebody else that was working there. So it was it was very unique in the way that you can see how something like Maker's Mark that pushes out you know something like 20,000 bottles a day versus something like Limestone Branch that can do anywhere between you know 200 to 500 you know if they're really ramping up production because versus something that's completely automated versus something that is all still done by hand from you know, catching the white dog out of the still into a bucket and putting it into a bottle through hand and then hand labeling and, and handwriting all these different little things. So seeing that 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 vast diversity of what it takes to become a small distillery and hopefully make it to a, a large distillery was something very unique. Right. And I, th- I think, too, uh, it's funny you mentioned Limestone Branch. I think the last time I was there, uh, the, the tour guides from Maker's Mark were there touring. And that's the part of the industry that I love is that people do get along and they want, you know, what's good for, you know, each individual brand typically will be good for the industry and vice versa. So that's really kind of proof of my existence that they're willing to all kind of chip in, um, you know, for that same goal because they realize, you know, a rising tide, you know, lifts all boats. And then I think also another similarity that people kind of see is, when you're down at Makers, you're going to run into Greg Davis, who's you know the master distiller there, and you know still working on production. You're going to bump into him just like well, I'm sure when you were at Limestone Branch, you bumped into Steve Beam, who's you know the owner with his brother Paul, and uh, you know he's there you know making his whiskey. So I think that's cool. I think that's one of the things that really um, makes it such a memorable experience for people is you know you're meeting those people. Uh, behind the brands, no matter if you're, you know, big or small, you know, when people run into Jimmy Russell at Wild Turkey, they, they wig out. I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of bottles that guy signs when he's down there. I mean, star shock. Exactly. Yeah. So just go down the list. You're going to run into our guys. Yes, they're on the road a lot. Uh, but I still feel like when you're visiting, you know, chances are good. You're going to run into the, the guys and, and, and gals that are helping make, you know, your favorite bottles. Yeah, one thing I really like about the Bourbon Trail, I've been to Napa and Sonoma, the Bourbon Trail is really intimate with allowing you to see the full production. Like you get in there in the distillery, you can smell the mash, you can see it going through the tanks, you get like pretty up and dirty, you know, (laughs) looking at all this stuff. So it's really cool to kind of get to see it, you know, behind the scenes. Sure. And uh, we were just out in Napa, uh, at least uh, for me, it was my first time and we went with a bunch of visitor center people to kind of see how uh, they tackle hospitality and how they tackle tours. And, you know, one of the things that jumped out of me was, yes, the Napa tours were fantastic, but there is a little bit more of a seasonal nature there in Napa. So we were there in January, so we didn't get to see like that whole process, but I feel like other than maybe, you know, a few weeks out of the year, if, if one of our guys is on a summer shutdown or they're retooling the still, you're going to see, you know, that process, you're going to see it, you know, from start to finish. That's really one of the luxuries we have here in Kentucky versus more of a seasonal winemaking operation. Um, Cause you're right. I think when you come here, 
especially if you take one of these more in-depth tours, uh, you're going to see that entire process from, you know, the yeast to the, the grain to the, the warehousing, um, distillation, all that, you know, start to finish is what really makes our tours uh, special, I think. Yeah, I agree. Another thing, too, is like with Napa is great and all, but it seemed like it was like four miles, like a, this one long road of winery, 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 like that you could just hit all there. But where the Bourbon Trail, you kind of get to drive around. You have probably about 30, 40 minutes between each stop. So you kind of get to, you know, reflect on where you were and learn about where you're going and kind of see what, you know, Kentucky's all about, too. But yeah, I, I think that you're 100% right. In fact, it's funny in a lot of our surveys that we do, this is the thing that cracks me up is I, I think our, our question says something like, you know, tell us your most memorable part of your experience. And we, so often we get the drive. People love the scenic drive. I mean, think about driving into Woodford or think about driving down to Makers or think, I mean, there's just so many scenic parts of our state that you get to see you know, when visiting the distilleries that make up, you know, the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, it just, it's, it's one of those things where you think, oh, we're putting, you know, this much money in our visitor centers and our tours and our experiences. And people just, (laughs) people just like that drive, you know, they really enjoy that part. So you're exactly right. Yeah. Spring and fall here in Kentucky is like, there's nowhere on earth. It's prettier, better weather. I mean, with the fall, you got the pretty foliage and green grass spring, you got the flowering trees and you know, the, gr- the grass is coming out. It's just, it's, it's really awesome experience when in that those times of year. One of the things you kind of mentioned were the, the, the production and the hours, and sometimes there might be a week off, but you know, what I've kind of seen is there's, they're almost running full steam, almost 24 hours a day, 365 because of just the bourbon shortage that, well, quote unquote, bourbon shortage, right? Right, but right. It, the, yeah, the the demand that is that is that is seen. So they are they're trying to utilize their equipment as, as much as they can. Right, and I think you know it's a little bit of a kind of a traditional thing. You know, um, with some of these summer shutdowns, most and not all of our guys do that. Uh, some do, some don't. Some of it's due to kind of water issues. You know, it's typically in the summer. And we always tell people, if you're coming in July or August, you typically want to just double check. And now most of the tour, you're going to see about 80%. You might not see the entire kind of process, but you're going to get, you know, still a really good taste of what it's like. But uh, you're right. I mean, our guys are all, are all putting as much bourbon back as they can to, to meet, to meet demand. And uh, these are all good problems to have. (laughs) Yeah. Business is not bad. No. So I guess another thing to kind of talk about is this passport program. You know, the, you can look on the website, you can you can read about the passport. There's a thing about getting a free T-shirt. What's all that about? Right. So we've got our passport program, and that's really if you go to each one of our uh, member distilleries on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, get a stamp. Uh, we'll send you this uh, free T-shirt. So we started this program. Uh, in 2007, I think we had something like 180 people do it. And the next year it was something like 3000, then it went to nine. And then now we're getting, you know, 18,000, 14,000 a year, depending, you know, we've got a little bit more to do now with nine stops. So we're naturally seeing, you know, it just takes a little bit longer. So, um, but it's but kind yeah. of it's kind of funny that you're seeing that rapid growth, even as you add on more distilleries, more places to go, more things for people to see. So they're they're definitely tacking on more of their dollars onto being able to do it as well. Oh yeah, I mean people are they're taking multiple trips. I think you know you, I, I hope you guys have a passport you're working on. You know we hear that all the time. Of I always forget I, to take it. But <laughs> I have a problem. problem. People <laughs> stay there. Well, we have so many ways of honoring your trip. If you went and. And you send us pictures of of you standing next to Chris Morris at Woodford or whatever. Well, we assume you're there. You know, there's <laughs> ways that we can help people who who forgot it. But really, it's just it was really kind of designed to to drive people to the distilleries because there really is no starter or finish to the Kentucky Bourbon Show. We say that all the time. Um, it really is just this experience that we want people coming back uh, for multiple trips, multiple stops, and. You know, our guys are always adding something new, whether it's, you know, Heaven Hill adding the Evan Williams bourbon experience or the new bullet experience at Stitzel Weller or, you know, if you haven't seen the new visitor center at Wild Turkey, you know, we're always trying to add stuff 
uh, for people to do. Um, cause that's kind of the feedback we get all the time is people want more distilleries. We've got the craft tour where they want, you know, new kinds of tours. We want new kinds of events like the bourbon affair we're working on. Uh, so, you know, we're always trying to make sure we take care of our new guests, but also our guests that have been a couple of times. We always want something new, uh, for them to do. I'm assuming that that t-shirt budget has just gotten off, off hand then you just can't even keep up with it. Yeah. It's gotten pretty crazy. We've had to get some outside help. Um, it used to be the, the two people in the office before I was hired. Uh, we went from two people to three and now we're at five, uh, cause they were just folding shirts day and night. It seemed like, so now we've got some outside help because it has gotten crazy and we've really tried to put a little bit more money into it just because we know people are, are doing more, spending more money. It's, it's more, uh, stops. So I, I think this year is our nicest one yet. We've got a, a nicer shirt. We got, um, kind of a local design that uh, Robbie Davis helped us out of Louisville. He does a lot of the against the grain brewery design. So we're always trying to improve that because we know, uh, it's quite the investment people are putting in to, to complete that. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You mentioned Robbie Davis. I actually used to work with him at a marketing agency probably like, gosh, I think it was like eight years ago. He was definitely, he's a good artist and that I've seen a lot of the things he does. It's, it's, it's very, uh, I guess you could say old world kind of tailored, almost like a vintagey kind of feel. Yeah. And he, he did a good job of, of kind of capturing what was in my brain in some way, which is scary and, and putting a much, <laughs> better, a much better twist on it. And, and he's done a good job, uh, with that. And, we try to take that design. It's in our new brochures that we've got out where we've really revamped some of the information we, we get out to people with this new design. And, um, hopefully people will like, uh, the new brochures that literally have just, uh, just shipped out. We've, uh, got a huge order and we're trying to fulfill all those requests because we get a ton of those. It's crazy. You would think that people don't request brochures anymore, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of when I was a kid. You know, you always get these like these triple A trip ticks whenever you, you go on like these road trips or whatever. And I, I guarantee that business is probably gone, but who knows? Yeah, it's people still like that thing in their hand and especially the map. Um, we tell people all the time, man, when you drive down to Makers, your cell phone's not going to work very well. And there's, <laughs> <laughs> so it's good to have a, a map and we really try to, you know, accomplish that with this new design because you are on the road a, a fair, a fair bit. Like you said, Napa, I feel like it's all down that one road, but you've got to get on some nice country roads uh, here in central Kentucky uh, when you're out on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail for sure. Yeah, yeah or you can just hire Midgill Tours and be, you know, safe and fun. Don't have to worry <laughs> about driving. Exactly. Yeah, Midgill Tours and R&R Limo are two big transportation partners. They do a great job of getting people out safely and uh, where you just don't have to worry about anything. And because, uh, you know, like I said, if you haven't, if you haven't driven to some of these places, you might think, where am I? And uh, they, they take all that guesswork out of it. Oh, yeah. And so, Ryan, I just remembered this. So next time we forget our passports, there's actually an app on the App Store that you can actually have your, your digital right. you can actually have your digital passport on you so we can just, quote, unquote, get that stamp when we go in there. Exactly. Awesome. I never forget my phone, but <laughs> I always forget other stuff. Well, yeah, phone, keys, wallet. That's, that's exactly that's, that's the only thing you have to remember when you go out the door. Absolutely. <laughs> So there's another thing in your website about biking the trail. Is that something that, that you've seen a, a lot of uptick in with, you know, I guess with this whole, uh, you know, eat healthy and be healthy sort of mindset that everybody's Drink healthy. Of, yeah, drink healthy. <laughs> that's, that's what bourbon's there for. Exactly. Yeah, we've seen uh, a good number of folks that, that wanted that option. And uh, we've got some help from the Bluegrass Cycling Club really helped us put that together. We're kind of tweaking it around because we've added so much that uh, – you know, some of those guys aren't as easy to get to by bike. And so we're, we're actually kind of tweaking that as we speak to try to, um, update that a, a little bit more because we want, we typically try to give people, um, you know, the, the most beautiful, but also the safest route. And what's funny is, is actually the folks who use it the most are our motorcycle folks. I tell you what, I, I would think we have to be one of the gold standards of motorcycle trips in the country based on the feedback we get from groups that, that have their bikes, uh, around to the distilleries. I mean, people love it and they use that, some of those routes, particularly like say, um, steel road, you know, kind of the wild Turkey Woodford, uh, part of the, 
of the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. Though it's those type of areas that people are just they can't believe it. Um, if you've ever taken Steel Road, uh, you won't forget it. Uh, it's just so beautiful back there. I mean, it's another reason why the Bourbon Chase is so popular. There's a reason Mike ends the race the way he does in that neck of the woods. I mean, it is gorgeous where you yes. get to run. Same thing with uh, biking. People just can't believe it. And so the distilleries have tried to kind of accommodate um, kind of that sector of visitor a little bit more because uh, it has become uh, increasingly popular. Yeah, I was going to ask if you are affiliated with the the uh, Bourbon Chase. That was my first experience seeing all the distilleries I participate in it. Uh it was awesome. I'll probably never do it again. But <laughs> right. I'll, I'll just drive from each distillery instead of running, yeah. you know, over Sounds a couple like hundred like, miles. Yeah, my wife did it once. I've done it twice. Um, and she's like, I, I don't think I need to do it again. But it, <laughs> it's one of those races. If you're a runner, I, to me, it's a must. I think. That's oh, it's, it's cool. It's, uh, it's a beautiful race. It's very well run. We help uh, with, obviously, the kind of the distillery part of making sure – you know, everyone's kind of coordinated because it is a logistical bear putting that. Oh, yeah. If, if, you, if you can only imagine, and Mike uh, Koontz, who, who owns and runs the race, he does a great job, his whole team. So that, that's a great event because it brings in people from all over. I mean, all over. And we really like the, the fact that it, it really exposes people to the distilleries and different brands that they may not have uh, already uh, experienced before. I remember my last leg was to Woodford and like, I remember just like stumbling up a hill and like seeing it at the finish. And I was like, Oh my God, I've never been so excited to see a distillery in my life. <laughs> yeah. But that Woodford you sampled there tasted pretty good. Absolutely. It's the best one I ever had. <laughs> Especially exactly. at that point. Yeah. So we're right at the top of the hour. I guess the last question I have is to help people do the bourbon trail faster. You guys plan on putting in like a bullet train between all these places. That's not a bad idea. We'll have to. <laughs> We'll have to look into that. That I, I kind of it's imagine safe. it like a like the like a shuttle, like if you're at ATL Airport or something like that. Like you have a countdown, like every three minutes, this train goes to the next one or something like that. Yeah, well, it might it might take some infrastructure, but uh, <laughs> not a bad idea. Well, good deal. So, I guess if uh, if anybody wants to find out for more information about the Bourbon Trail, how do they find out about it? The best is kybourbontrail.com. dot uh, com. That's kind of our bedrock of information. We've got you know, maps on there. We got all the tour times because everybody's a little bit different, you know, in terms of when they're open and hours and days. Uh, and then also, you know, for most up to date stuff, like I'm sure we'll be keeping an eye on the weather. Uh, Twitter is very popular with us. We're at KY bourbon trail, same with, uh, Facebook and, uh, Instagram as well. Instagram has been great for us. Um, so we're really, we're on all those social media, but our website will kind of kick you to all those, um, for helping plan your trip. Well, awesome. Well, Adam, thank you again for being our guest today. Sure. It, was a, it was a pleasure talking to you. So if you like what you're hearing, make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at, at Bourbon Pursuit. Mm-hmm.